Okay. Ah. So, um, January, what is it? I have to think. January 28th, 2023. And I'm actually just want to start with um, a, just a little bit of a naming of the current events and Tyre Nichols in our world right now. And the experience that I think is resonating for many, many of us of how do we cope when we feel like the world is flying off its hinges, when we feel like things feel so chaotic and so out of control. And the experience for me of having a practice to come home to again and again as a way to regulate my own nervous system, to take care of my broken heart, to connect with other people who are coming in with an intention of care and compassion is what this is all about. And so I really, really do deeply from my heart just um, send this, this prayer, this hope, this wish that this is that ground, that, that landing place and a place of care, knowing that this care is both self-care, but also community-based care. And that we can feel, as I kind of shared in last class, the weaver, this quality of the, the fabric that holds us as, um, as a connected unit in a source of strength and a source of love and compassion. And clearly I have to close a window. <laughs> My son just hit the, the, the camera. Ah, there we go. That should do it. So, right, in a world that feels like it is sometimes spinning out of control, we may sense that we too have lost our bearings and that we need these practices to bring us home to center. I was interviewed yesterday um, by someone who was writing a piece on vagal, no vagal nerve uh, toning and vagus nerve toning. And we were just talking about, you know, the things that the world might need right now in the sense of a very collective dysregulation of our autonomic nervous systems. And as we weave those practices into this 90 minute flow, I really do hope that we find what in yoga we call this place of sukha. And in uh, sukha is often referred to as sweetness, um, but it's also kind of most directly translated as the hub or the axle of a wheel. And that when that is not well greased or when it's not well refined, the, the whole ride gets rumpy, you know, grump, uh, <laughs> bumpy and grumpy maybe too, <laughs> and right? You know, that we just get this feeling of it's just not rolling smoothly. And so we are aiming to smooth out that quality within us so that we can find the center that is unmoving that allows everything else to, in a way, flow around us. We can find the that um, center of the hurricane, if we want to think about it that way, the, the still unmoving place. And, uh, you know, that way our, our wheels don't wobble quite as much. Not that we won't wobble sometimes, right? And, you know, in some ways, if we have, you know, now, you know, 87 of us here, if we have 87 wheels on this bus, if we've got a wobbly wheel, we're going to be okay, right? Like we can actually hold the wobbles better together. And, um, and so, you know, this is, this is our practice. I'm going to invite in this practice a few opportunities for what we call the inward turn of yoga, which is really allowing your senses to go inward. Um, there'll be an opportunity to cover your eyes, to cover your ears. You get to choose and opt in or opt out of anything that I offer so that if that ever feels like it's um, it's uncomfortable, just honor your own, your own rhythms of coming back out into connection and going back inward, um, really listening to your own body. But these inward turns or and these inward turns are these opportunities to nourish yourself with your own awareness, your own attention, especially when there's a lot happening in the world around us, our attention can go outward. And we're focusing on 
whether it's the news or other people's experiences or just just our senses get kind of heightened. So these inward turn moments are the invitation to come home to yourself. The title of today's class is Homecoming. There are practices, these are the practices that bring me home to myself. It is my greatest hope that they help you connect with the wisdom that resides in your own body and mind and spiritual heart. May this guided journey support you to cultivate a reliable felt sense of ease and equanimity that radiates from your inner light out to the world. With all of that said, I have a lovely poem chosen for you today. And the invitation is to find a space that allows you to receive these words, whether you want to remain seated, whether you want to lay down, uh, whatever is going to just let these words wash over you, be received by you. And the poem is called Inhabit Your Bones, and it is by Says Christensen. And if you're catching this by recording, I will put a link to her work um, and to this particular poem in the comments or in the YouTube uh, notes. All right. Inhabit Your Bones. Unpack your bags and plant your trees. Build a hive to house your bees and bed your flowers like slumbering seeds ready to bloom under moons and suns. Wait, the long wait until you doubt what all this waiting is all about. And you decide to finally create within all those things you seek without. Because nowhere does there exist a person, a place, a thing, a gift outside of you that can make you feel like you have roots, like you are real and can take up space and take what you need without the feeling of shame, the feeling of greed. Inhabit yourself, inhabit these bones, inhabit this heart, Inhabit this home inside of you that does not depend upon walls or a door or a family name or a mat on the floor. That says you are home, that, you, that says you belong because you always do and you did all along. Inhabit these bones, inhabit this heart, inhabit this home inside of you that does not depend upon walls or a door or a family name or a mat on the floor that says you are home, that says you belong because you always do and you did all along. So unpack your bags and plant your trees. In every place you find yourself a stranger. In every moment, you find yourself a guest in your own life. And you will always find a home in the soft loving of your bones. All righty. I shall transition a little bit further back. I'm going to kind of be making my way back towards my mat, but I think I want to stay a little closer. Um, I will share with you, if you are transitioning onto your mat at this point, to, um, that it is helpful to have two blocks for today. And if you don't have blocks, books, or soup cans, whatever would support you, perhaps to bring the floor a little closer at a few points in practice. Intentions for today. I am home. I am home. I inhabit myself. I inhabit myself. I reside within a sanctuary of self. I reside within a sanctuary of self. And if you'd like to join me, perhaps rubbing palms together, 
I'm feeling a little bit of warmth. Generating that in your hands, maybe your arms, especially if you're in a chilly place as Colorado is in, is in the moment. <laughs> gathering, gathering, gathering. And then an invitation to place your hands over your eyes and pause. And allowing yourself to experience a quality of resting, of perhaps even residing behind your eyes, inhabiting this space. Feeling perhaps the comfort of the darkness and that there is nothing to reach for. Perhaps feeling a quality of the warmth of your palms resting towards you, supporting. You might even give a little bit of the weight of your head to your hands. And you can stay here longer. Some of you might say, oh, this is just lovely. I want to reside here longer. And if you're ready to move a little bit forward, just beginning to sweep your fingertips across your forehead towards your temples. You might even circle around your temples for a moment. You might sweep across your cheekbones towards your ears. And again, that very intuitive, follow what feels good, maybe massage out across your earlobes. You can even tug down a little bit, ah, letting your ears get long or massage that little area of cartilage in front of your ears, the tragus little vagus nerve stimulation right here. And then if it feels right, perhaps allowing your fingertips to come towards your ears, and I'll speak this because you might not hear me in a moment, but if we add in the ujjayi pranayam, it, it brings in an oceanic quality to the breath, that wave like shh, right? It's like fogging a mirror, but breathing in and out of your nose. And you can amplify that by using your fingertips to just gently uh, press in towards your ears and let the sound nourish your nervous system. And then if you can hear me again, slowly letting your hands release from your ears and from shoulders down to elbows, a little bit of that self-havening touch, feeling your own gift to yourself. It's like a hug and a welcoming of yourself home. From here, the invitation is to interlace your fingers, to place them behind your head. And we did this last week, or at least recently laying down. Today, we'll engage in the basic exercise seated. And you might explore how it feels to send your eyes towards your left elbow. And we're just reaching the eyes so the head and chin can stay forward. And it's a little bit of a stretch here. And as we reside in this shape, 
Noticing how your breath responds. Maybe an urge to breathe a little deeper or an urge to yawn or sigh. All welcome, little subtle signs of a release. And then bringing eyes to center, a moment to recalibrate, just receiving with that stretch of the eyes initiates. And then taking your gaze all the way to the right. And it's a stretch of the eyes alone. Notice if there's any tendency to want to grip or hold your breath and see if you can just return to a subtle, easeful. While we're stretching, we're still seeking sukha, that easeful, well-greased axle of the wheel. And when you feel ready, you can bring your eyes back to center and perhaps let your hands soften down back to your lap. Beautiful. I'm going to shift a little further back to my mat and we'll continue to integrate this through body and mind. Knowing that sometimes that basic exercise can stir up a little bit in the process of waking up that body-mind connection. So if you did feel a little stirred, uh, be gentle and know that that too shall pass. By stirring, you might notice, let me change my view so I can see what you're seeing. Um, by stirring, you might notice a little dizziness or even a little nausea that can sometimes pop in. And if that's the case, be very gentle. So we'll continue here from easy pose. Uh, easy pose, sukhasana right, our sukkas built right in there, this simple seated cross-legged. And if that's not so simple for you, if you go, oh, that doesn't feel so comfortable sitting up on a block, finding what does make that easier for you, because that's the point where we're not coming at any of this in an aggressive fashion. So finding ease here. Returning breath to breath and maybe to that oceanic or that ujjayi pranayama. And then we're going to find a circular movement. And here, perhaps even imagining that you are that wheel turning. And you might inhale as you come forward and exhale as you come back. And then taking this the opposite direction. And just like that wheel, you might notice that there's spots that feel a little bumpy or grumpy or wobbly, right? And if that's the case, you can pause there and you can smooth it out and send your breath into any areas of your body calling for your attention. Beautiful. One more this direction. And coming back through to center and a little bit of a seated cat cow or a um, even like a little seated porpoise. And I'll just kind of give a little example here. So you can find a, a little bit of a flexion and extension of your spine. Or 
we're going for that porpoise, you can kind of imagine that you're diving into the water and coming back and diving in. So following any of these spinal waves or movements that allow you to feel a sense of mobility, ease. Finding the range of motion that feels right for you. Beautiful. And then coming back to center, new invitation. Everything's optional, so feel your way into what works for you. This time, kind of walking on your sits bones side to side. So you're just going to walk towards the right hip and the left hip. And obviously, we're not going anywhere too fast here, but I'm just exploring how that shifting from side to side begins to translate through your spine. So you might now imagine that you're a little sidewinder snake and that your spine is going here, left to right, and allowing that to wave on through. And then we'll find the side bodies a little bit more here, leaning to one side. You might place a hand down, opposite arm can go to your hip or overhead. Doesn't matter which side you're choosing, we'll do both. And you might gaze down, forward, or up. And we'll flip it around to the other side, your version. This nice, easy warm ups here. And then back home to center and just tune in, right? That was a lot of movement actually, right? And just arriving with what is present now, noticing what we may have stirred up like the snow globe and letting everything settle down and reveal what it reveals. Okay. Next invitation is what we'll call heart twists. Okay. And some of you've done this with me before. We'll place hands over the center of your chest and then gazing to one side as you follow your fingertips away from center and then back to center and we'll switch sides. And the breath for this one is interesting. You can explore it. You might feel drawn to inhale as you extend and exhale to center. Maybe try that for a few times. And you might explore how it feels to exhale and inhale yourself home. And let your body give you feedback, which feels like the homecoming for you. And then when you feel even on both sides, Pausing at center. We'll find one more twist here, drawing both arms up. Exhale to one side. I'm going to go right. I'm just going to speak you through it. If maybe join me on the right, right fingertips behind, left hand towards your left knee or thigh. And then maybe take your gaze behind you for a moment.
And then perhaps adding on, we take hold with that left hand against the leg and then begin to lean. So now right hand comes up and we're leaning left shoulder towards left knee. And we have a little traction here. So you can press right knee into the hand and feel that lengthening and stretch across the right side body. Finding your edge of sensation, backing away, deepening in. And then when you're ready, lifting back up, unwinding. Side two, inhaling. Exhale this time to the left. Left fingertips can ground for a moment. Hooking right hand on outside of left leg and beginning to draw your gaze back. Maybe the eyes reach towards the corners of their sockets once again. And then hooking hand to knee or thigh, beginning to lean right shoulder down and maybe left arm overhead and feeling that traction and that opening of left side body. You always get to explore gazing down, ahead, or up. Hmm, let it feel good. And then when you feel complete, lifting up and out. Good. Little rotation of hands around wrists, elbows, shoulders. We did a lot of that last week and some joint rotations in the legs. We'll start with the right leg, right foot in one direction and the other direction. Shin in one direction and the other direction. You might get some snap crackle pops like I just did. And then nice wide hold, hold, you know, handing foot and knee or something thereabouts. A nice big wide hip circles in one direction. I absolutely love these joint rotations going the other way. They seem to set up my day just right. Okay, so a few options here. One, I'm going to show this first with bent leg, just swinging leg out to one side and the other. And when the leg is coming across, if your right leg's going towards the left, you might even gaze a little bit towards the right. And then again, you can swing your leg. Some of you might take hold of your foot and do that with more of a straight leg. Uh, you can again still keep a micro bend in your knee and you can switch the hand to foot as you come across your body. So there's neither better nor worse, right? We're going for that edge of sensation and the stretch that brings you home. Good. One more each side, whichever version you're taking, and then extending your right leg to the floor. And this time, just kind of sweeping your hands down and back up your leg. So greeting your skin and you get to find the depth and quality of the touch. You can maybe pause and greet your foot, say hello foot, and you can do all of this with a bent leg. So you do not have to feel like you have to strain your hamstrings here, right? This is the point is to wake up and greet yourself as you are. And then perhaps leaning side body once again towards right leg. And you can find the depth of that. You can keep left hand on your hip or reach overhead. And there's no goal. Just meeting yourself where you are. And lovely little playful moment here, placing left hand down, maybe lift left knee up to the right foot, little stargazer moment. And then as we settle the hip down, come back towards that forward fold. And we'll rotate two more times, left hand up and around to lift and exhale as you settle your hips and come back around forward and third time, up and around, lift, enjoy, savor, settle and back down. 
As we lift up this time, rebending through the right leg, planting or setting your feet towards each other in a kind of wide cobblers. Your feet can be a little bit further away from your hips, finding that space and just greeting, greeting this shape. You can again find a little cat cow. Or just leaning forward. You might even give your both feet a little love here. And then we'll lift up and find side two. So this time I have my left leg lifted and circling foot around ankle in each direction. Shin. The other way. Wide hip circles. And bent knee, open and cross, open, cross, or maybe straight leg or thereabouts, taking hold of your foot. You might open, switch hands and cross. And this is one you can do with a strap as well. So lots of ways to play in these shapes. And we're going to have we're going to revisit these very same shapes standing later. Mm -hmm, that'll be interesting. So just kind of playing with what's to come. Okay. From here, lengthening your left leg to the earth and some of those beautiful sweeping, I'll say hello, all the way down to your foot. Knee can be bent. Greeting this home that you inhabit. Okay, and then perhaps that side body. Oh, I love this one. Lifting up. And remember, this is all about your rhythm. So if there's a shape that you ever feel like, oh, she's moving too fast. I want to pause there. I want to linger. Do so, right? This is about you and your rhythm. When you feel ready, right hand to the earth, lifting hips and resettling and up and around and up and over and up and around. One more time. Beautiful. I'm here, bending both legs. This time, I'm going to turn on my mat, feet about mats width apart, okay? And then letting your knees drop to one side. You can follow around with your upper body and through center and the other way, following around. And then it's your rhythm from side to side. And another option here is to take that same movement hands free. Many of you who have been regulars with me know this one well. And it begins to waken up the core. Let this be a joyful ride. Okay. And returning to center, an invitation to come down onto your back. And very similar to what we just did seated, feet wide out to the edges of the mat and let your knees go to one side through center and the other side. And you might find a very organic stretch through your upper body, maybe reaching that opposite arm overhead, maybe the shoulder lifts off the floor. This is one of my very favorite little organic stretches. 
Again, we can see our favorite pets and animals in nature do this one quite naturally. We have it in us too. Ah. And then that puppy dog rolling on its back, just a little bit of returning to center. Ah, wiggle it out. So from here, maybe walk your feet hips widths or so apart and an invitation to bring right leg up overhead. And you can take your hands behind your right thigh. And if your knee is bent, hallelujah, all is well. You might rotate your foot around ankle one more time here. And then crossing ankle across your left thigh and a supine figure four for a moment. We're not in any of these shapes too long. Good news is... If there's one you don't like, we'll move on so swiftly. And if there's one, of course, that you do like and want some more time, take it. Now, from that figure four, planting left foot down, you can take your arms wide for a moment and then press into left foot to send your hips slightly to the right and your right foot down towards the earth. So we're in like a figure four twist and you might even re reach your left hand down to your right foot. It was a little pretzely here. And then just exploring the sensation in your right hip. I know I feel some there. Maybe imagining you have a little straw you can breathe into, sending your breath and awareness into the sensation that wakes up for you. And then we unwind back to center, hips to center, sending left leg to the air, a little ankle movement here, greeting the back of your left leg. And then figure four. So sending left ankle atop the right thigh. You can lift right foot off the earth and either stillness or some gentle circular movements. And replanting right foot. You can place your hands wide, press into right foot to send hips left, and then sending left foot down towards the floor on the right. And a twisted figure four, sending awareness to the IT band of your left leg or the, the hip. Maybe you reach that left arm up. And we unwind. So our next little segment here is going to be a core strengthening segment. You can opt in or opt out. And I'll share some variations on all of these. So the first one is to lift through the right leg, to reach around, perhaps again with your hands clasped around your right leg, this time to lift through your upper body. You can always switch hands below head. So really listen here. You might stay like this. You might reach your left leg long and hover left heel above the earth. You might spread your arms so that you're reaching fingertips long towards your left foot. Either way, whatever shape you're choosing, come to breath. In this static hold, you might feel a little bit of a shake. Good. And then hands behind head if they're not there already. And just begin to lift and lower through your legs. So we have a scissoring action here. Now it might feel right to keep upper body lifted as we have it, or you might just do the lower body and let the upper body rest down. You might even take your hands down by your hips, gripping onto your mat or planting your hands down. So options, including you can bend your knees and not do this with the straight legs. So really finding the version of this that's right for your body for today.
and eventually pausing with the left leg lifted. You can plant the right foot to start. You can clasp around your left leg to start and then perhaps extending right foot long, maybe hands long or hands behind the head, depending on what is serving you today. In whichever version you are taking, come to breath. And then hands behind your head. And just as we did before, walking it out, sending one leg up and the other down. And you can do so with bent legs. You can do so with your upper body lowered down. You can even pause one foot to the earth, the other foot to the earth, right? Let this be at the level of challenge that feels just right for you to choose. And of course, you might opt out of all of this and that's totally welcome as well. Next time right leg is lifted, pause, maybe start with left foot on the earth and we'll find a twist towards the right. Maybe then extending your left foot, maybe reaching your left hand. We've got some static holds in our core sequence. And this time we're gonna go right to the other side, lifting left leg. You can start with the right foot planted, find your twist, and then maybe you extend that right leg, maybe you extend right arm and coming to breath. These are challenging, be gentle. Okay, back through to center, both feet to the ceiling. Final big challenge here, side to side. Maybe you've built up a little bit of heat here and you want to begin to exhale out the mouth. So it's like a straight legged bicycle. And if you wanna make it a bent legged bicycle, do so. If you want to alternate placing feet on the floor, right, do so. If you want to skip all of the above, do so. Beautiful. One more to each side. Returning to center for a moment, hug both knees into your chest. Hmm. Maybe sigh something out, let something go. Let's do that again. Ah. And then a brief moment in stillness in Bija seed pose. Coming home to yourself in this more contracted shape. Really sensing where you begin and end. Sensing the floor supporting you and maybe still some warmth you've generated in your core. A little tether to self. And when you feel ready, perhaps placing hands behind knees and a few rocks on your spine. Eventually rocking up and over your shins and meeting in a tabletop. In a few moments here to just move it out, breathe it out, ha, ah, right? Let yourself integrate all of the spinal movements and the joint rotations and the core awakening. And how does that inform how your body wants to move? Make this yours.
Okay. And you, of course, can continue to find your own free flow. And I'll guide you through a few options here. The first is a cat and cow, lifting head and tail, exhaling to arch your spine, maybe even lift to your fingertips for a moment. And then as we inhale, you can plant the palms, drawing the hands back towards knees as you draw your heart forward, a little traction. And then exhale again, maybe you cupcake your hands, lift to finger fingertips, really reach the back of your heart towards the ceiling or the sky. And then one more time, inhale. And finding a neutral tabletop, a few um, cat-cow circles here. So allow yourself to find some hip circles, letting your head go in the same circular direction as your hips. And then everything else in between is kind of going between that cat-cow and little side bend. And then coming back through to center, pause, recalibrate, especially if you got a little dizzy. And then we'll go the opposite direction. So once again, letting yourself find your way with the hips, let the, your head mirror your hips, and then everything else in between will find its way through. And then pausing and center once again, and just allow yourself to receive, feel this shape. We're going to pause with the toes curled under, starting to press your hips towards your heels. And then as you walk your hands towards your knees, maybe turn your fingertips in for a moment. And this is a variation on toes pose. We're also getting into the wrists and maybe like your, you know, that image of the cat kind of pawing here, just lifting and lowering, alternating heels of your hands. And then maybe lifting the hands off the earth as you walk yourself up to rest above your toes in toes pose. And you've guessed it, we're not here too long. So take a moment, greet the shape. If it's too much to be stacked, you might be forward, right? Just listening and honoring, waking up through the fascia of your feet. And then this time as we lean forward, untucking your toes and maybe sitting back onto your heels, honoring your knees. And then maybe lifting one knee and the other, greeting the front sides of your ankles. And you might send your weight into the tops of your feet, lifting both knees for a moment. Yeah, I know these are a little different, a little challenging. We're not there long. Come on out back to tabletop. This time from tabletop, a invitation to send your left leg behind you and for a few breaths, just rock on the heel. And then sending your left leg up off the ground, you can bend through your knee if you'd like and send your heel up and then knee towards your shoulder, head up and knee under your body and up feeling these different positionings for your hips to the shoulder and up 
And under this time, we're gonna lift, we're gonna come towards shoulder and we're gonna plant left foot. So here's where it gets a little knee funky. So if you've got challenging knees, be gentle and you might be higher, right? You might be kind of lifted well above your knees. Some of you might be crouched down in. So listen to your body. And whichever version you're taking, just get to know it, right? Get to know and even find some spinal movements here. Right? You can reach one way or the other. You can crouch on in and lift You find twists or side bends. And some of you've done this with me before. We're gonna turn towards the left knee in the high or low position. And then we're gonna plant right hand and return back to that stargazer we found from the floor before. And we're gonna turn towards left knee and reach right hand plants. And we open one more like that around, open, nice proprioceptive awakening here. Pause, stay in the lifted shape and maybe even curl right toes under. You're gonna use your left hand to twist, 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 lift, 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 up and around into gate. And as we arrive in gate, just feeling your self embracing the shape, again, the side body. You can keep those left toes down facing forward, or you might flex your left foot. Just different feeling in the leg. And then up and around, back to table. We'll find all of that on side two. Starting with the right leg behind, a few pulses in the heel. And then lifting. Bending your knee, knee to shoulder and back and under your body and back to your shoulder, back. Do you still have sukha? Does this have a quality of still feeling effortless? As we take right knee to right shoulder, we can plant right foot. And now we've got that half squat shape and it might be up here and it might be crouched in and get to know it, right? Can we still find that quality of ease and sweetness and smoothness to our movements and to our breath even so that it just feels like, oh, I'm so glad to be here. I love coming home in this way. I get to take off my shoes and leave my jacket and keys at the door. I am here. Okay, and then maybe twisting towards that right leg and then sending left foot and reaching open and then curling it in and planting the hand and reaching it open. And coming back round. This time as we open, we pause, we stay. Maybe you curl left toes under and using right wrist here as you rotate the hand and lift and lift and lift up and over into gate. You can gaze down, ahead or up. Enjoy, receive. And up and around, eventually we meet back in a tabletop. Ah. So from here, next little segment is going to take us into down dog. Some of you might say that was plenty of practice for me today. Thank you, Dr. Ariel. I'm going to rest now. If you're ready to continue, we're going to curl to both toes under, lifting hips and finding our first downward facing dog of this practice. And an invitation here to walk it out. Bending alternating knees. And then maybe bending both knees to one side and the other side. A little twisting out here. As you twist your hips, bend your knees, you can send hips towards your heels and the other way. Beautiful. And then back through to center. 
from center, an invitation to lift through your right leg. This time you can bend through your knee and find some big wide hip circles here in each direction. And then eventually lifting your leg, gazing forward, stepping right foot forward between your hands. Here's where those two blocks can come in handy. And a few breaths here, in and out of your lunge. Left knee can be lifted or lowered. And just a new shape in gravity and a new way to get to know yourself today and to come home to inhabit yourself. Beautiful. Eventually, I'll invite you to take a slightly shorter stance into pyramid or a variation thereof. So with pyramid, we've got the right toes forward and the left toes at an angle, and we're working towards a long spine and a squaring of your hips. But with everything here, make it yours. You might begin to bow over your right leg. You might stay lifted. You might have a bend in your right knee, really protecting your back of the right leg. You might even hang a little bit over the right leg. And then from here, invitation to step your left foot a little further back so that we can make our way from the floor into triangle trikonasana. Now our block here is well positioned in front of the right foot or beside the right ankle so that if you're going towards lengthening through your right leg, we're gonna begin to just open up the chest and lifting into this very classic supportive shape of beautiful place to inhabit your bones. Really feel the groundedness of your legs. Again, you can keep that micro bend in your right knee. You might gaze up towards your left fingertips, forward or down. And then softening through your right knee, lifting left heel back into a lunge shape and then toe heel your right foot out to the right so that both hands are on the inside of your foot. And then from here, you might keep those blocks or you might let them go, an invitation to come into dragon. And as we come into dragon, we're turning towards the right thigh. And I'll show this from a different angle for a moment so that the right foot is angling out so the knee can track over ankle, over toes as you turn over that right thigh. And you might settle left knee to the earth. In doing so, it might allow you to free up your left foot and you might reach right arm around to take a hold, taking the dragon's tail. But remember with all of these shapes, there is no better or worse or right or wrong. So you might be reaching in that direction, never taking a hold of the foot. And that can feel quite delicious as well. Eventually we release, we let it go and planting both hands, stepping right foot back to meet the left and a pause here, downward facing dog. You might walk it out or you might choose stillness. Hmm. All righty, finding all of that on side two, lifting through your left leg and bending and finding some lovely hip circles in one direction and the other. Eventually gazing forward, stepping left foot forward and through, maybe using your blocks and finding your way in and out of the lunge. Knee can be lifted or lowered.
And then eventually we'll find our way to pyramid on this side, lifting both knees, stepping right foot a little closer. And then you can have a nice wide enough base for your feet so you're not on a, on a uh, um, tight wire, but maybe a little bit more like two parallel tracks. And with blocks or without, long spine or a little rounding, maybe a bend in your left knee, finding your way in. And then beginning to lift in the halfway, lengthening your stance. We prepare for a trikonasana for a triangle. You can move that block a little further back if you'd like. You can use any height if you'd like. And then begin to lengthen from your left leg through your torso, side body, reaching through right fingertips. Luxuriate in the wide open space. Let yourself claim the space, take it up, residing within the sanctuary of yourself. And begin to soften your left knee. We turn down, lifting right heel. And here we can toe heel out the left foot and allowing yourself to find this lunge. You can keep that knee lifted or you can lower it. You might begin to turn toward that left thigh. And if your right knee is lowered, maybe you free up your right foot. Maybe you reach around. You don't have to clasp anything at all. And maybe you do. Whatever you choose, let it feel good to you. Stunning. All right, coming back around, releasing the blocks for a moment, planting hands and stepping back to downward facing dog. Mm. <laughs> And an invitation here to gaze forward and take a nice, long, slow, savory walk to the front of your mat. And finding ragdoll, both knees bent as much as you need to let your torso rest on your thighs, head heavy. From this point, an invitation to come up to standing. You might choose to roll up nice and slow, vertebra by vertebra, until we come up, head last, crown of head to the ceiling, nice and tall. And notice, new relationship to gravity. Sensing and feeling your breath, your body right here. And check in. Was that enough for you? Or would you like to continue moving? Let your body be your guide. If you're ready to continue on, we'll find some sun salutations here, starting with a half moon uh, side body. So inhale to sweep your arms up and exhale to one side. And inhale through center and exhale the other way. One more time each side. Beautiful. To center this time, clasping your hands behind your back. Inhale to lift your heart. 
and exhale, forward fold, keeping your hands connected. Feet can be nice and wide, hip widths are even wider. As you draw your connected hands overhead in Yogi Mudra, the act of bowing the head below the heart, the seal of yoga. And slowly by way of your sacrum, releasing hands down to the earth, inhale to find a halfway lift. And exhale to fold, planting hands, stepping back, a high plank for a brief moment, feeling your strength. And exhale, lowering your knees and lowering all the way down to the earth. Finding a few rolling cobras here. And in rolling cobras, you get to choose the range of motion, how much weight you want to place in your hands, how much lift of your heart. And eventually settling down to the earth, using your hands to press yourself back into child's pose. A brief pause. Child's pose is a, another beautiful place to really feel where you begin and end in space to bring yourself home once again. Knowing that this is always available for you throughout the remainder of practice. And if you'd like to continue moving back through table, curling your toes under and pressing back, downward facing dog. Inhaling from here, gazing forward. And as you exhale, making your way to the front of the mat, however you would like to get there. Inhaling, finding a halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale all the way to standing. Exhale, side bend. Inhale, center. Exhale, side bend. Inhale to center. Exhale, goal post your arms, lift your heart. And inhale through center, forward fold. Inhale, find the halfway lift. And exhale your way to downward facing dog. You can come through cobra again. You can move from high plank to low plank. Maybe you find an upward facing dog. Maybe you're back in child's pose, or maybe you press straight back, downward facing dog. So the challenge becomes, how do we stay connected to home base when things speed up, right? We've got more movement happening. Can you still feel yourself connected to your body, drawing your senses inward to really bring that attention to you with all that might be swirling around? Maybe taking your gaze forward or making our way to the front of the mat, however you would like to get there. Inhale, finding a halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale to standing. This time exhale, Utkatasana. You might bring feet together for this one. We're gonna set the hips back a little bit here. Okay, and inhale, sweeping your arms up. Good, gotcha. All right, inhale here, exhale as you draw your arms back and then begin to move with the breath. You 
You might exhale through the mouth, maybe a sound. Great place to let go of something that doesn't serve you. One more. And inhale through mountain. Exhale, forward fold. Maybe you feel your heartbeat. That's the point. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, planting your hands, stepping back high to low or however you would like to get to downward dog. You can skip the vinyasa. From here, invitation is to lift your right leg. Exhale, gazing forward and stepping forward and through. Planting that left heel down, walking your arms forward for a moment. So we're at an angle. It's like warrior two feet and a downward facing dog in the upper body. Feel the length. And then walking yourself back in towards your right foot. You can spin around. We're going to find warrior two. Maybe you gaze over your right fingertips and you might continue to feel your elevated heart rate here. Enjoy it. The signs of your aliveness and knowing your own body is going to give you feedback. How much for today, right? Keep listening in. A moment to inhale, reach away. And exhale into an extended side angle. You can bring forearm to thigh, maybe left arm overhead. Feel that beautiful length of your side body once again. And this time, the inhale is the invitation to come all the way up to five pointed star. So feeling that ability once again to take up space, thoroughly enjoy how it feels to be alive in this moment, to receive that. And then perhaps to bend your knees, we'll come into goddess. And you might walk your feet slightly closer, just depending on your body. And traditionally here, we'll take a, a classic arms. You might even bring a mudra, bringing your thumb and first finger together. the strength of your body in this shape. Beautiful. Inhale through five pointed star and exhale towards the back of the mat. This time as we come into a warrior one, so you might toe heel your feet a little bit, allowing that back foot to be angled like we had in pyramid, a little bit of that wider stance and bending through your left knee. Now, classically we're angling our hips forward, but there's a point where they'll naturally stop and you can take your torso a little bit more forward, maybe draw your arms up overhead. Inhaling here. Exhale, releasing your hands, clasping behind your back, and inhale once again, lifting your heart. And exhale into a humble warrior, bowing your shoulder, your head to the inside of your left knee and shin. Your clasped hands may be reaching upward. And by way of your sacrum, softening your hands down to the earth, planting your hands and stepping your left foot back to meet your right. This time the invitation is to lower your knees and lower all the way to the earth. From here, Maybe taking your hands behind your back and finding a variation of that heart opening as we clasp the hands, lifting upper body, maybe lifting the feet into locust. Mm. 
and then softening, letting it all go, planting your hands under shoulders, pressing back for a moment, child's pose. Back to breath, back to your intention, I'm home. I reside within myself. I settle into the sanctuary of self. And then when you are ready through table, curling toes under, pressing back, downward facing dog. And we visit this on side two. This time inhale through your left leg and exhale forward and through to a low lunge as we plant right heel and walk hands forward into the, you know, kind of off the mat here. Well, downward dog in the legs and or downward dog in the upper body, warrior two in your legs, this ostrich pose. And while we might want to keep our heads buried in the sand, we will lift up once again, walking towards your left foot and lifting up warrior two. <sighs> Inhale to reach away. And exhale into extended side angle. Oh, it can feel so good reaching long. Feeling that connection between your outer right foot and right fingertips. And inhale through five pointed star. And you guessed it, turning heels in, bending your knees, goddess pose. This time, an invitation to play for a moment, lifting your left heel might even pulse for a moment, just feeling what happens in your body in this uneven variation. And then lowering your left heel, lifting your right, a few pulses. Lowering your right and maybe lifting both. Brief little experiment, what happens? We survived it, lowering both heels. Inhale through five-pointed star. And exhale as we turn towards the original front of your mat, preparing for warrior one. And allowing yourself to find that footing, turning towards the front, maybe lifting through your arms. And exhale, releasing hands. One more inhale here as you clasp hands, lift heart. And exhale, forward fold, humble warrior. Slowly by way of your sacrum, releasing your hands down to the earth, planting hands, stepping back. Your choice if you want to find a vinyasa or if you've had enough of those for now. We're pressing back to downward facing dog. This time, the invitation is to walk your hands towards your feet, bend your knees. We're eventually coming up to standing. <laughs> We've got one little balance play before we're down on the mat for the rest of practice. In this final balance play, I think you can, you can do it from here. The, uh, 
the invitation is to truly play for a moment, okay? So we're gonna kind of allow ourselves to find that sukha, that sweet spot, that stillness in the midst of an invitation for a bit of movement, okay? So I'm gonna show this very briefly, and then I'm gonna guide you through it, but I think it's helpful to see what, what we're about to do, what I'm gonna guide you into. So the invitation is to start in what we'll call half goddess, all right, one-legged goddess, right? So we'll have one le leg lifted. And then from here into a variation of dancing Shiva, right, uh, foot lifted, left hand forward. We're gonna take that behind. Again, you don't have to clasp, we're just dancing there. We're gonna come back forward, keeping the forward this time, just turn the upper body, and then as we bring upper body forward, back to half goddess. Let's do it together. Okay. Play with me. Guess what? If you fall out, floor is not that far. If you want a wall to help you balance, take it. First part here, through Utkatasana, just as our transitional space, inhale. Exhale, arms to a goal post lifting right leg. Left leg is our standing leg here. We're gonna take right leg to the side. Here's our half goddess. Now you can keep that little bend in your left knee. It's gonna be helpful for today. I feel all of the, the little movements happening so far. And now taking right foot forward, left arm down, a little bit of our dancing Shiva, dancing in the midst of all the chaos, right? We're going to take right leg behind, reaching left arm behind as if trying to clasp. We're going to come forward again. This time knee is forward, goal posting the arms and just the upper body turns. Coming back through to center, right knee to the side, half goddess. One more time through on this side. All right, forward, dancing Shiva to the back. Knee forward, upper body twist. Back to center, ooh, ooh. half goddess, and take it down to the floor. Take it out, ooh. out through the legs, out through the ankles, the arms, the wrists. Side two, bending your knees, goal post, left knee to lift, to the side, pausing for a moment, just feeling yourself in this shape. And then maybe dancing Shiva to the back, Knee to the front, upper body twists to the center, knee to the side, half goddess. One more time, to the front, to the back, knee to center, twisting upper body, back to center, knee opens and let it go. Well done. Inhale, sweeping your arms up for a moment. And exhale into ball of yarn. We're gonna fold forward. We're gonna bend the knees and wrap everything up in a tight ball for a moment. You can keep your fingertips on the earth or you might choose to wrap your arms around your shins. Feeling yourself coming back home in this nice, small, contracted shape. And then fingertips to the mat, walking yourself to your seat. And the imitation is to come all the way down to your back. The final integration here is an opportunity to just find some rolling movements through your spine. So as you lift your hips, you might even lift your arms overhead and exhale, lowering back down. 
a few of those. Lift, lower, lift, and lower. And this time, as you stay lower down, there's two choices here. The first is to find a kind of rocking integration here with your knees bent and you're just pressing, pulsing into your feet and it will send a rocking movement through your torso, shoulders, maybe even your head lets go, your arms let go. And you can stay just like that. Or you might find the same rocking integration with your feet long, just that heel rock, letting the rest of your body go for the ride. As you rock, you might notice that your breath really helps you let go into the movement. So if you notice that your shoulders are gripping or your jaw is gripping, sending your breath to those places. And exhale, let something go. And then very slowly, letting the rocking return to stillness and sensing what happens in your body upon that completion of movement Sensing and feeling all that may continue to swirl and move on the inside. And this is a beautiful opportunity to rest and especially after a very full and long practice like this i highly recommend that you reside here for a good 10 minutes taking in all of the benefits receiving them into your bones into your organs I'm joining you a little bit closer, but I'm encouraging you to stay, to rest. And once again, I'll offer you the words of our chosen poem for today. Inhabit your bones. Unpack your bags and plant your trees. Build a hive to house your bees and bed your flowers like slumbering seeds ready to bloom under moons and suns. Wait, the long wait, until you doubt what all this waiting is all about. And you decide to finally create within all those things you seek without. Because nowhere does there exist a person, a place, a thing, a gift outside of you that can make you feel like you have roots, like you are real and can take up space and take what you need without the feeling of shame, the feeling of greed. Inhabit yourself, inhabit these bones, inhabit this heart. Inhabit this home inside of you that does not depend upon walls or a door or a family name or a mat on the floor that says you are home, that says you belong, because you always do, and you did all along. So unpack your bags and plant your trees in every place that you find yourself a stranger, in every moment you find yourself a guest in your own life. And you will always find a home in the soft loving of your bones. Again, I'm going to encourage you to stay and to rest and to receive this practice. 
as you continue to allow yourself to soften, to feel nourished, to feel deeply connected to the sense of home that resides within you. And from that place within me that knows the sweetness and the ease, I bow to that place inside of each and every one of you. Namaste.